for uh, No Man's Sky Aquatic, my aquatic base. Now, originally, um, I had some biodomes. First, I'll show you what it looks like from overhead. This is a very, 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 very stormy, stormy planet. It's uh, super heated storms, has uh, lightning and uh, meteor showers, so those things rain down, explode all around. Uh, lightning bolts explode all around once in a while, too. Uh, it's always rainy, always stormy, but it's got a really wicked ocean. It's also got some really interesting uh, fluorescent pinks and blues uh, in the night sky and in the morning. So it's uh, got some really cool fluorescent pinks, neon pink, neon blue colors. So uh, this is my build right here. Uh, originally I had biodomes, I had about nine biodomes on this plateau right here. And um, I had, I actually just did this today. I just uh, re redid it, my biodomes today, just because of. I'm going to show you in a second what, what uh, one of my, my one of my three plateaus here actually has a donut shaped uh, recess. So I actually built within that recess. So uh, this is uh, where I started off here. So I got my little base computer over here. This is my entrance here. I got uh, two teleporters, which I'll show you in a bit. One going to uh, plateau three over here and one going to Plateau 2. There's also another trans uh, teleporter over here which goes into the aquatic base section which is built off the uh, the side of Plateau 3 over here. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to take this over here to a little bit more of an air, airline view here. And uh, there we go. Well, when I go over this side I'll, I'll show a bit more in depth what it looks like. But yeah, at one point this was just hollow here. I didn't build anything inside of that. I just had nine biodomes over here instead, and over here I have uh, 16, 17, uh, 18, 19, I think I'm wrong, 18 or 19 domes right here. Uh, basic materials. Uh, not really a farm to make money with, uh, because I'm a, I make most of my money through activated indium. Uh, my activated indium mine is really cool too, I can probably show that later on after this build right here. Uh, my activated indium mine actually brings me about 100 and some hundred about 120 billion uh, units uh, of money money units what we call it uh, yeah, per per transaction it usually takes about 12 hours or so before I get another load of a uh, hundred billion so this is just a simple farm and aquatic station so for my nautilion to uh, travel around the oceans here uh, in case I need some uh, pearls or uh, uh, those uh, what are those things called again um, Whatever, whatever else can be harvested underwater that I use for building aquatic bases and stuff. Okay, so I've said it's my panels right now. I'll take a little tour here. So this is uh, so off here. So Save be beacon. I guess you can tell the weather is really, 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 really stormy. Staircase here. So I'll see a, a wood and a, some concrete. I use some concrete foundations and some metal. I try to make it look kind of realistic. It's some space age material. Like th theoretically, theoretically, the foundations might work if it was space age material. But I thought it looked cool to create like a mix of foundations because I just don't want to let it hang there. It looks silly if it just hang it there with no real foundation. So I thought I'd build a foundation for it. So that's a support structure of metal. Uh, metal beams, I think was kind of cool. And, uh, here we are. This. That's a simple little brandy here. Okay, this is my teleporter I put right here, base teleporter. This uh, will take me to the aquatic station underwater on the third, uh, off the third plateau. I'm going here. This is the main hub here. This goes over to the third plateau, and this goes over to the second plateau. So we're gonna go second plateau. And here we are, second plateau. And as you can see, a little bubble dome here. Just check out the ceramics. And yeah, can't really see much on a rainy, rainy, rainy day. And back here, I have uh, two landing pads. There's some lightning and thunder coming through. I build quite a number of these. Uh, the power, I actually ran out of power when I added the aquatic station when I redone because I had a, another aquatic station, aquatic station before, but it was uh, built in front 
actually in front of the water. It's kind of a small, narrow area. And I just, I dismantled it today and I added the uh, biodomes and uh, the biodome tower going all the way down into the rock. Plus, the aquatic station is actually over this area in the water behind here. And there's some lightning and thunder over there. So this is my solar panel thing. And you can see how I can pull up the entire square of solar panels. And hopefully the batteries and the panels actually hold a charge. I didn't take into account how much electricity I need, but uh, yeah, quite a few. Uh, but it takes quite a lot of energy to power up this little base. It's not a huge base. I uh, put most of the biodomes in the rock so that it wouldn't uh, cause much lag. Uh, so far there hasn't been any, but when the actual plants start growing, I might encounter some problems. Like I might encounter some problems because you know when plants grow in no man's sky, if you're familiar with that, uh, what the heck's this? Uh, it kind of causes a bit of lag sometimes. Oh yeah, we're gonna show up above here as well too. So if I wanted to, I could take this uh, teleporter, go all the way down the bottom, or I can actually take this walkway and do this as well too. So I'm gonna show out here exactly what this looks like out here. Okay, so we're on the, the third plateau. Took the teleporter from uh, this area here with solar panels. And we actually zipped over here now. And uh, I put some uh, vegetation from the... Uh, this is stuff you can add on when you buy this from the uh, Nexus there with your uh, Quicksilver points. You can add this stuff on. And um, so this is my, my, my tower inside the donut hole. At one point it was just empty donut hole. And uh, I decided to take the... Uh, the bio, biodomes I had on that plateau I'll bring them over here instead just to be a bit more creative now I'm hoping by having these in here and hopefully there's not much I mean much lag but uh, usually if you have over if you overuse or over uh, overbuild these uh, biodomes with the plants it'll cause lag and pop in and a lot of slowdowns so I thought by building it a little bit in the rock it actually might cause a little bit like uh, it might cause a bit more help and uh, causing less lag and less uh, pop-ins. I tried to cover this all up with my terrain builder, uh, but it was really messy and ugly, so I just uh, uh, reverted it back to its original form, and it looks kind of cool like this anyways, being slightly exposed. So I'm gonna go inside here, and uh, around. This is uh, this walk will lead down the actual spire, the biodome spire, into the, uh, the aquatic station as well. Now these plants aren't fully grown yet, because I just built the thing. But when they do, it, it might cause uh, some slowdown. I'm not sure how much slowdown it might cause, but it might cause some lag. So this one has four uh, frost warts, uh, frost crystal plants. This is uh, mostly used for uh, making uh, glass for windows and stuff. So that's uh, all four, all four domes. So yeah, I think there's like I'll say 16 of these. Going down, these sections are the hollowed out cube rooms I use for uh, for transaction uh, transitional uh, areas for ladders. Uh, I got two, I think. Uh, yeah, I got uh, two of those solar uh, solar plant uh, domes, and then also two of those uh, gamma blossoms, whatever they call there, the uh, those bright bright uh, radioactive flowers. Uh, these are the uh, the giant mushrooms, uh, the giant fungi, mushrooms that are actually found on toxic planets. These are these, uh, what do you call these things again? The uh, facium, facium blossoms. That's uh, for uh, usually making bait and stuff for if you can uh, catch animals, use it for bait. Uh, yeah. Certain types of bait, you know, the enzyme fluid and all that. So we're going down this, see this section here was a little bit tricky at first, but I got it through. So this is a transit, uh, transitional cube room into the glass uh, glass tube that leads into aqua station so I connected the uh, the the cube uh, the cube room the little ladder area into a uh, transparent uh, glass tubing going down into the uh, the aquatic sections here it wouldn't let me build any more underneath this for some reason it would let me build another section for some reason it said it wasn't uh, aquatic, which is strange because it's all aquatic and here, but whatever. Uh, I guess they're working on the bugs. So this is it. This is the bottom level of the uh, the biodome area. So then I got the uh, uh, what are these things called again? Uh, the thing, uh, 
more die more die blossoms roll all over here. Uh, these are things you usually get from killing animals, killing creatures and stuff. I got all these carbon things. Looks quite nice in here. Uh, these are the uh, star blossoms or whatever they're called over here. These are star flowers. And then, uh, wait, oops, oops, oops. I hate when it does that. I like the way the rock looks underneath here. This is the uh, wet area. This is all underwater, but underwater, but within the rock area, right in the bottom of the donut. These are the cactuses they'll grow eventually, and this is a little bit of everything that's left over. I could put these, uh, uh, what are these things called again? Uh, I forget the name of these things. But anyways, these uh, host flowers that have the orbs, the glowing orbs, and these, uh, uh, whatever those, the, the, the pearls, album and pearls, what they're called, and yeah, one little weed, uh, gecknip plants in the center for the 13th flower there in the center. I got some gacnip growing in some other bases, so I don't worry about it too much. I got plenty of gacnip. And uh, down here, big. Now this looks pretty cool underwater here. This is the uh, the tube going from my uh, the main spire going down into the rock, and going through now through the rock to the outside of the rock. So this goes right through the rock to the outside where the water is, where the ocean is. And this is the uh, aquatic station area. There it is. This is the this is the fourth section, off of the uh, the third plateau. Let's see how nice it looks. So this will take me back to the third plateau, like a quick one, so I don't have to travel all the way down for the wadu. I can zip up. And I'll show you. Zip up. Boom. I'm here right now, back at the third plateau. See, this is where uh, this is where I walked before. This is on the bottom section. So if, if I want to go back upstairs here, this will take me back up towards where I was before, just on top of the third plateau, where the dome starts, and then go back down underneath. So let's go back over here, zip, zip back down here, and here we go, we go back to the, the aquatic station, whoops, and we're back to the bottom, bottom here. And this is the uh, bottom section here, got some gacnip growing here, some, so it's like clandestine, there you go. It's very nice with the little foggy effects and stuff underneath the water and the pinkness of the water looks really cool. And then uh, this is like a little storage area. I have like a little research kind of research storage area. Everything's all compact and stuff. I added the aquarium. Uh, I think the way I like the way it looks, I'll think I'll keep it in there, even though it's kind of cluttered. This is the section over here. I'll show in a second. This will actually lead to the outside. It's a uh, it's a bottom, uh, kind of like a forest field. You can go down the bottom here and then catch an outlying out. An outlying that's parked out there. I got it still upgraded a bit more. This is a chill room. It's like a living room or a living quarters, uh, kind of a chill room. It's a bit like a, a, a fake TV up there or something else to show us for I had to keep my build kind of like a, I had to add a little detail at the same time. I didn't want to overdo it in case uh, the, the plants started to uh, grow and interfere with everything so I know what it's like to overbuild and then cause massive lag and pop and so and this is the eating area uh, cooking area and the, the sleep area for the this one holds three members of people uh, three, three characters whatever as you cook a little bit of something there a little chill area I would sit down there and uh, I thought I'd make it as somewhat realistic some scenery out there all the fishes swimming by lots of fishes Lots and lots of lots of crystals in this uh, planet. Lots of crystals. Uh, uh, cytophosphate. There's plenty of cyto cytophosphate like crazy on this planet. And salt. Cytophosphate and salt. Like crazy. I was gonna actually uh, go to first person view here and just I got. Yeah, I'll go outside in a second here. So that's this section here looks like. And, uh, oh, go over here. So, you know, down in this water area here. I'm gonna splash in. There we go. Yeah, I don't want to zip around too much in this knob line until I have it fully upgraded. But once it's fully upgraded, uh,
base looks like from the outside. I'll try to photograph the uh, thing out. It's going to expose what it looks like from the outside. I added some uh, neat looking uh, support systems here just to give it a nice little realistic look to it. Plus, I don't really trust these uh, these retractable supports too much. Sometimes they don't work. Sometimes they stay up and they don't come down. So I kind of like left that one over here even though I was going to add some more support, so I didn't want to add too much. Like, each one of these counts as something. It's a cube, and if I add too many of these, then it might uh, add to the complexity of the base build, and then the, I might run out of things I can add to the base. So I kind of said, okay, I'll take a chance at that support system there. And so that's what it looks like from the outside. Small. It's a small build, I think. It's got a little bit of everything, though. It's got the domes, and actually, I'm probably going to a picture of this because it looks really cool. Uh, this is a uh, uh, so that's what it looks like. Take a little trip around here too. I have problems with the uh, the bottom of this base uh, build on the other side. These legs didn't come down and causing problems so it's nice that I actually took it from the little area down in between these rocks over here is where it was at one point and I just actually brought it through and I uh, brought it through the rock and added a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. It's also I should remind people uh, as well too it's it's also useful to have your your uh, your your freighter ship all uh, upgraded so that you can uh, actually use it for uh, keep all your stuff so you don't have to keep on backtracking the stuff you can keep all your materials in there and uh, I like, you know, if you keep all your materials in here and you have the uh, the teleportation system built on, then you can actually just fucking, you can all build, build the stuff still in here. And, and plus, if you have your storage containers on ship, you have all your storage containers all contain your stuff, you can zip back and forth and pick what you need and put back what you don't. So it's very handy when building on a planet. If you bring your ship there, and your ship has to be fully upgraded too for some of these planet systems, uh, star systems. Um, or red stars, green stars, whatever, and you have to have the right uh, warp drive on these things or else uh, or else the freighter won't be able to go there on its own. You'll have to you'll have to summon it yourself. Or it won't it won't go there. Actually yeah, it won't go to the system if you don't have the upgrade for it. You can only go to the uh, the simple the simple systems. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. That's about that. Just go back up here. Let's show how easy it is to go back to the first section to the plateau one. So this one here will bypass the entire walk I took everybody on, and this will take us back to the first area. There we go, back to the first area. And that's uh, that's my that's my my new aquatic base from a No Man's Sky Origins. All right, I can really show the uh, activated idiom. Uh, build I have too. I'll go there in a second. But yeah, there we go. The sky is a bit more clear. You can see now. That looks a lot better. Yeah. There's my base. Yeah, I don't want to build anything here. I, if I build more, it might just cause more slowdowns and lag. I could always maybe rearrange uh, the uh, the landing pads. But I like the landing pads to be on higher ground anyways. And this could just be left the way it is. That's a nice little thing. I might add a tele telecommunications uh, Orb. What is this? Oh, it's just a rock. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna just zip over really quickly. I know this wasn't part of my uh, original video thing, but I'm gonna zip over to. Uh, I've got plenty of bases, but the one I'm gonna show is the. Uh, uh, this one here is my my main act act uh, active indium activated indium mine. I had another one before, but when uh, we got Origins, uh, my my Red Hot Planet uh, got changed into one of those uh, hexagonal planets instead. And pretty much every hot planet that was before Origins became something else, and all the hot planets became uh, either storm, like you know, rainstorm planets that were extremely hot, or uh, volcano planets that had to be totally retooled. So uh, anything that was originally a hot planet before it got changed over. So that means. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, mine activated indium anymore. 
So this is a. I don't know if there's any. I don't think there's any volcanoes on this planet. There is on my basalt basalt planet. There is where I'm mining basalt, uh, basalt basalt, whatever it's called. But there's nothing on uh, on this planet. Uh, it's volcanoes. It just it's just firestorms, fire raining from the skies, and there's plenty of fire everywhere all the time. So it's a quick little. It won't take much longer. It's going to be about maybe a uh, maybe two minutes of a, of a quick little walk. Not even. I'll show you what uh, my activated Indian mine looks like. Like I said, I once again I I, uh, I buried all my uh, my mining areas underneath the dirt, underneath the ground, in order to uh, make it uh, less uh, laggy. So if you put all your uh, all the machines underground. And, and you then you you dig it up, you dig up the ground area, you put the stuff in, you put the machines in, the harvesters in those areas, uh, so they can harvest up the minerals. And actually, uh, if you, I'll show you what I'm doing here. So this is, I'll show you the inside for a second. This is the inside. My little uh, guy there, he's busy work. So a uh, little living area once again. So I'm like making it look kind of realistic. Small little less cluttered area than the other one. Let's get in this whole living area. Not much, just a two bed and a two locker area. And there you go. And kind of kept simple, very very uncluttered. Because I didn't want to add too much because there's a lot of stuff going on all at once here. So this is uh, this is my activated India mine project. Mostly made of metal, metal tree pieces, I guess. My add some light to this place. You're gonna see what it's like. It's all lit up. So there you go. This is uh, got two landing pads, as as you can see, it's all red and white metal areas. And uh, I'm getting my energy, my electricity from over here. As you can see, I'm running a line, a power line from a uh, electrical field that's also close by, and I can actually harvest my electricity from. And uh, it's all the way over here. You can see it's double decker. It's actually a double decker electrical field. I actually uh, built uh, kind of like a, a bunch of floors above, above a bunch of. Uh, I'll show it in a second, I guess. So, yeah. So over here, see all these. These are actually just the uh, the storage tanks of uh, that hold activated indium. And you can see a couple of the harvesters sticking out, but everything else is kept underground, like right underneath this big hump that's the uh the place where all my activated indium is i think it's an a uh it's an a source it's an, uh, an s class i think it's an a class source of activated indium so that's decent it's uh, it gives me a decent enough amount of indium activated indium and i can sell that every day for about uh, close to 120 billion 120 billion units so i get that every day i can replenish up to my four uh is that 4 billion? 400 billion? I think that's something like that. Yeah, this is the maximum amount of uh, units you can have. This is like 4 billion or 400 billion or whatever it is, I guess. So, yeah, that's what it looks like from the outside. And yeah, I'll go down here. Uh, so, usually this takes a while to load up. What does it say again? It says it takes, yeah, so it takes about, actually longer, it takes about 20. 24 hours, 20 to 24 hours to load up uh, at 55,000 units per, uh, you know, of activated indium per hour, and it takes that a whole 129,500 uh, units of activated indium, which I can then harvest and sell. And every new system I go to, I can sell for for a good price. Uh, you can't sell this stuff at the same system over and over again because there's a Although they they'll give you they won't give you very much. You can sell it one time, you'll get a good amount. And then it won't sell. It, you won't be able to sell it again until you go to a next uh, a new system. I'll just a quick little run down here. So I ran my line to power up all my stuff. I ran my line uh, from over here. Really simple, simple, simple stuff. Uh oh. Uh, these towers for realism, I guess. Ran my line power lines going these tower to tower to tower. There. So 
so basically this is it right here so that's enough enough power being uh, harvested I had the original fuel right here and then I, I thought well you know like if I put these on top of these I can also get uh, the energy uh, point I guess this whole thick around here then it kind of gets weaker as it dissipates around the areas here so if I, I can build upon the, the focal point where the energy is the strongest by putting these on like a, on a rack and it still harvests the, the same electricity right. so I can still focus on the harvest point it's really simple 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 but uh, build up nothing too fancy that's about it where the where the heck am I all area it's a hot planet oh, there we go now it's now slowly jetpack slowly uh, refilling again hotter planets and planets where there's heated rain and stuff the uh, jetpack you can actually fly for longer periods you can just hear it hear that rumbling it's all underground all my harvesters are underground the majority of my tanks as well it's a medium-sized build. It's not like the biggest build around. I've, I've seen bigger, way bigger builds. It's a medium-sized build. And it gives you what I need every day. You can only hold so much units anyways. So I'm going to take myself back over to my space station was before. And uh, this is, uh, where was I before? Let's see. And that was over here, I guess. All right, so... That's about it. All right. I might as well show the uh, my my freighter too while I'm at it then, because I um, I have a small base in my freighter. That's where I keep all my storage, like I've shown above my uh, my aquatic station. And I'll show that real quick too before I sign off. Might as well I have to wait around. Plus, I can uh, post this on my Instagram anyways for people who are, uh, like my builds. It's not like. Uh, I have another build too, I can also show as well too, but it didn't, you know, I, well, I guess I could. I can do that too before I, before I go. Surprise, a surprise build. Oh, I'm gonna go here for a second. And, uh, call my ship. It's, uh, it's basically a big old Venator, Venator ship. I have an orange, orange and blue on it. It's huge. It's the biggest. It's the one. It's the biggest one there. It's not small. It's not medium. It's a big one. I got my land. It was originally uh, white and red, like the Canadian flag, because I'm Canadian. So I, I farmed this uh, ship in S class, and I uh, took me a while to get it. When I finally got it, I was so happy. And uh, the name of my freighter is the uh, the Balshazir. It's the Balshazir, and that's how big it is. It's a big one. That's an S class. I'll just do a quick little tour of this, and then I'll uh, take you to my skull, my skull thing, which is pretty cool. My skull base is pretty cool, and then I'll call it a day. Okay, so this is my build here. My freighter. 
I keep my teleporter over here, and now we can put our teleporters in the ship. You can't teleport to our freighter, but we can teleport from our freighter. Uh, from our freighters in this game. This is my, uh, my place where I can actually, uh, if I have my freighter in the system, I can any vehicle I want into, my, into the planet, as long as my freighter is in the same system. I've got uh, four of these, I think four or five of these uh, little uh, stations to uh, send uh, my ships out. I've got full fleet. And they're mostly all S class. There's a couple others still A class. I got to level up because they're all my uh, things. I got so then I got these uh, this uh, section I built goes into the, my mess hall and my chill uh, area, living room mess hall area. Once again, there's my aquarium and stuff. Slide my picture. I should make it look as realistically as real realistic as possible. And, uh, is uh, going into the uh, place where, the, where the, the beds are, the bunk, the bunk room, and then that leads back up to that section. Real simple, real simple build. Leads over here, and then this goes over to the uh, storage area where my scientist is. See how my scientist is right now. If I can get any uh, nano, uh, nano, whatever they're called often. So I got some nanites, and wow, okay, they got 200 nanites for that. It's a research center area. I'm trying to make a, I think there's lots of storage here. And I just put up these racks I got from uh, salvaging freighters, so I got that as well. Once again, I don't recommend you have plants. Uh, you don't have plants, you don't grow plants on a freighter, because they can cause massive problems uh, with crashing and stuff. If uh, you grow too many plants, it happened to me one time and I totally broke my save file by uh, building a huge... Uh, when I first started playing this game, I built like a big uh, a big greenhouse on my freighter and it had tons of plants. Every time I loaded it in, it crashed my entire game. It's kind of stupid, but I, I didn't know how to build yet. I was, or I didn't know how to build my freighter yet. I didn't know how much uh, plants I could have and <laughs> pretty much I, I messed up my save file. My, Freighter comes like crashing out everything, or trying to sum the. So yeah, because of the goddamn plants, <laughs> that's the plants caused by caused the universe to crash around it. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's basically what that looks like. That's the inside of my freighter. And uh, yeah, so one last little trip, and then that'll be it for this little tour, this micro tour of my uh, my thing, starting with my aqua my aquatic station, which I. Have. I finished the uh, okay, other bases. Uh, this is known as the where is it? The, the dead planet one here. There we go. This is known as the uh, the AMDC or the Ank the Ank uh, Morpork uh, Development uh, Corporation. Uh, after the, the Terry Pratchett disc world uh, video games, or I never read the books, but I played the video games a long time ago. So I had to, I had to choose like a corporation name. I just said the Ank Morpork uh, uh, Development Corporation. I was like <laughs> based off of. Disc world, basically. So off to the A AMDC. Uh, it's a it's a dead system, which means the uh, uh, the species that once lived there no longer live there anymore, and the uh, space station is abandoned out in space. It's all spooky and dark, and there's a lot of red lights on and stuff. And so I built, uh, what I did was uh, I built a uh, base using a, uh, an abandoned uh, trade port on this planet as a base, as a foundation for building my base on. Oh, I'll show you what I did. Um, it, it's got some issues. I originally um, had tons of, uh, of Gecknet plants uh, on top of the base growing there in, in biodomes. But uh, there were so many problems, it kept on crashing uh, where the parts would load in properly. So I had to get rid of a whole bunch of uh, domes. So there's only, a f I think, four domes on top of the actual... So it's just basically, it's just for show and anything else. But it's got, it's got some gacknip. It's a gacknip place. It's like a weed, a weed store. I mean, okay. So it's a, it's a loads here. There we go. So it's got a little bit of issues. It's a little bit of issues. It's like these little holes that pop up, 
this really pisses me off. I uh, it's because I got so much stuff on this uh, this base. It's it's a it's a cool build, but it suffers from uh, from popping. So there's a little little simple area here to sleep in. There's a little you know somewhat of a small little workshop area. That, uh, it's not fully fleshed out. It's mostly the appearance on the outside, which I'll show you in a second. It's a little kitchen. Let's get lots of pop in, lots of problems. The graphics here are popping in, holes popping in. You can see the inside here. See, you can see the eyes. You'll 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 really like what you see in a second. Now, yeah, let's zip right out. Let's get. Let's get be surprised. This planet's beautiful too. It's one of those. Uh, it's called a Doom planet, and golden amber planet. It's really beautiful. It's almost like a Roger Dean uh, golden painting. Uh, it's got no no aliens. No, see, this is, it used to be a. a a trade port that's abandoned, so I was able to build on it. And yeah, this is what it looks like from the outside. Just, yeah. <laughs> so this is this is one of my my favorite projects I did. I just started it up like uh, and I built on it on top. You can see where I had more than one more than the the, the four biodomes I have left. I'm not gonna go up there or anything. I'm not gonna bother doing that. If you want if you want if you want to go there yourself, you can see on the bottom bottom left. You can see the, the glyphs right there. You can check it out yourself. Let's get it's all uh, mostly like a brick, brick veneer, I guess they call that, brick mod. And yeah, so those those four biodomes on top, it's for Gecknip. And I would all originally all these little sections are gonna have biodomes for Gecknip, but uh, they cost me problems. I get rid of them. But yeah, that's this uh, this solar field in the front. The uh, hidden wires as well too, solar field, solar panels, and there we go. That's what it looks like from the front. And I'm not gonna do much more other than show this little section here. And I'll take it back there. It looks really cool at night. And nights, uh, well, actually, I could probably even show it. It looks like at night by uh, creating an artificial uh, nighttime sky. So that's what it looks like during the day. Night. Let's. Uh, Nighttime, it all lit up. It all, it's all lit up. There we go. Almost looks like uh, Sean Murray a little bit there. <laughs> a little bit, not quite, but almost. Yeah. Yeah. Let's zip over here. This little quick thing over here. Gonna... Oops. Right, up here. Yeah, learning how much I can build without causing any lag or pop-ins. It, it takes some experience when you build in this game. And plus, every time there's an update, uh, like a new update, it always changes the rules and either gives or takes away the ability to add more to the build. So it's got, there you go, that's my uh, one landing pad. One landing pad on the back. So you can see right here. This is the back of the actual base that I built on top of the already there, already existing trade port that's no longer used. It's abandoned. This whole universe, I mean, the whole universe, this whole star system is abandoned. There's nobody here but me. There's no ships or anything. It's just me, and that's it. And there we go. That's what it looks like from the back. This leads into the main section. And then those are Gacknips. That's full of Gacknip on top. There's four of them. Only four. Used to be actually uh, more than four. Used to be all these ones too, but then I couldn't build it because it caused much uh, slowdown, too much lag. But yeah, once again, you know, I added a little bit of realism. All the support systems just makes me think of the black hole, the ship in the black hole. There, you know, the, all those girders and uh, scaffolding and stuff. It kind of went for that neat look as well too. That's it. That's uh, basically a little quick rundown of uh, first my aquatic station. And then my activated indium uh, mine, uh, and then my uh, my freighter in uh, this, my pride and joy, this uh, big uh, skull base, which is good for appearance, and it's not good for anything else. I mean, eh, it's got Gacknip on top. If you want to go check it out and get some Gacknip from my uh, my head shop, there you go. It's my head shop with Gacknip on top. 
It was supposed to be my space age headshot. There's the gek, gek nip on top. There you go. And that's a quick rundown of my my uh, my favorite my favorite stuff, including my my aquatic station, which I started off with. Uh, well, thank you for watching.